Hey, what up, guys? We're back. Welcome to the This Is My Moment podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Mitchell. You know who I got riding shotgun. <laughs> what up? This is my moment, fam. It's your boy, Money Mitch, back again with another episode. And also, if you haven't already, press that notification bell, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, do all that good stuff, man. Stay up with This Is My Moment, man, so y'all don't miss nothing that we got going on over here. Let's go to work. There ain't no stopping it. This is my moment. Uh, join the movement. We bringing people together, bringing positivity, making changes for the better. Hey, <laughs> I don't know, KT man. I, hey, this has been this has been a, a event for about three minutes for me. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> so it's gonna be a good one today. Let's see, what, let's see what we can do. Introduce yourself to the family. Hello, I'm Letitia Butler. I'm a personal trainer. I own a personal training studio over in Universal City. Um, so my maiden name is Newsom, which is why my studio is called Newsom Fitness. I recently got married last year in October. Okay. I served in the Air Force 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I retired to open up my gym. That's what's up, man. So first off, I want to say, man, I appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much. And I usually tell a story. Right from doing all the research on people, but we've been talking, and I don't know if any of these stories gonna be able to be gonna put these on YouTube because no, also yeah, because some of these stories we got some legal activity going on. <laughs> we, we got a little of this, a little of that. You know nah. I mean? So come to find out, family, we were stationed together at our first base together in the service. We actually worked in the same section. Yeah, and and. That just shows you how small the world is, and you know what I'm saying like don't burn bridges and stuff like that. So let's really? let's let's jump into it, man. How did you get into bodybuilding? Because I know in supply we wasn't lifting no weights like that. <laughs> <laughs> in the man field, I know you wasn't really lifting like that. How'd you get into bodybuilding? In the military, when we had our, our fitness test, you know, first yeah. we started out with that bike. Yeah. And then they switched over to that run, <laughs> that push-ups, <laughs> and them sit-ups. Yeah. And um, I wasn't doing none of that. So <laughs> Goodness. I didn't want to, I didn't work out then. Yeah. Had no desire to work out and I wasn't messing up my hair. So. Most important. <laughs> most, important most important. So what happened is once, so there was no consequence mm -hmm. um, if you failed these tests. Yeah, back then. Right, yeah. right. So I wasn't doing it. So when they told me there's a consequence, mm -hmm. I had to do it. Now at this time I was overweight. Yeah. So I had to do it. So, you know, when, when the, um, the test, so if you score a 90, you know, you only test once a year. Yep. If you do, what, um, 89 to 75, you get twice a year. Yep. And anything other than that, you fail, you have to do it every three years. So I get my 78 and go to McDonald's and be happy. Well, you have you have to do it every three years or three times a year? No, so if you, fail. you do it three every three months. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Every three months, so it's almost quarterly. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you ain't got. They gonna say if you ain't gonna be in shape, you ain't gonna have no <laughs> choice. We gonna make sure you get two a days until then. <laughs> <laughs> so my goal, yeah, was to pass. Mm -hmm. Let's get over seventy five. I would aim for a seventy eight. Yeah, and I would go to McDonald's afterwards and reward. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Treat yourself. That's Don't right. cheat yourself. That's right. My, so. That's but you, <laughs> you know what's funny is like that's that's not. Not normal. I was just that's, about to say that. That is normal. Yeah, that's that's people do it all the time, man. For me, I was skinny, man. I was, I was about a buck, buck seventy five, buck eighty, and I like being in shape was I was okay with it. So yeah. I ain't never had no no problem with it until I started getting older. You know what I mean? And then once I started getting older with the PT test or the PT test, physical test is it's kind of redundant. The PT test, and physical test, but <laughs> yeah. once I started getting older. Like it wasn't that easy to pack. Mm -hmm. I walked by, I played the food, man. I can gain three pounds. I ain't even <laughs> ate nothing. I'm just walking by. So when, when she and then you got about, flat feet, so that don't help. Boy, I say what? You already <laughs> know how it's getting down. So that's how you got to run. You out of that, man. In the worst position. So Sorry. the PT test, physical test, is what prompted you to start really. So I was it. like, I was tired of the cycle where I would work mm. out three months to pass the test. Yeah. And then I would pass the test, eat whatever I want. And then three months later, I got to get ready for this test again. Yeah. So um, what I did is I needed something to keep me on track. Yeah. So I'm a very, very, very competitive person. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to do bodybuilding. Yeah. I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> and had I known, I would have never done it. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those things where you, you, you realize it as you're in it. 
But um, so yes, yeah, so that's how I ended up in bodybuilding. So I did one competition. Um, I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this. I think I just like the results. Let me try mm. it again. So I did it again. Like, I still don't know about this. This is way too much. So then people started asking me, well, you help me with my fitness test. Oh, um, yeah. Then they started offering me money. <laughs> hey, the great motivator. <laughs> I said, what? You say, what? <laughs> so I decided to get um, become a certified personal trainer. And then yeah. I did another bodybuilding show. And after that, I was pretty much hooked. So I was doing them every six months. Knocking them down. Nice. That's what's up, man. So what's the highest you've ever placed in your competitions? So I did one. They had one here in San Antonio. It was a Latin one, so I came in first place. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. time over here, baby. <laughs> oh, my. Right. That's but, solid. Um, typically, I was placed in the top five. So I actually did a national show. So it was all North America. Mm -hmm. I came in fourth place. I was in a magazine and everything. Oh, so. wow. What, what magazine? It was called like NPC something. Oh, there we go. What's up? Sure, Congrats sure. on that. Yeah, that's big time. Thank you. Oh, if one of us out of the two do the working out, the other one don't don't do it. So yeah, I ain't gonna yeah. let you, I ain't gonna tell you which one is which. Yeah, you ain't gonna have to think hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at you, and I was reading your I was reading your bio and stuff like that, and it says that now you're pursuing your PhD to help like women and. Like during menopause, mm -hmm. lose weight into, along that same fitness line. So how? I was trying to add it up. How does your PhD play into like the menopause weight so, thing? So um, my PhD is in exercise and sports science. Ah. So my area of interest is menopausal women. Okay. How I did that is because so now when I started bodybuilding, I was old compared to the other bodybuilders. Mm. I was already over thirty five years old. Yeah. So most of the competitors are in their twenties. <clears> So they already, you know, got something on me. So I'm trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm doing it, as I get older and older, and then as I get into my 40s, it's getting hard to lose this weight. Yeah. So my body's not doing what it did in its 30. And I have to do some extreme things to pretty much get on stage. So, like, my diet is very restrictive. My workouts are very, very intense yeah. to be able to get the same physique that I did in my 30s. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. Why I'm doing the same thing. I'm eating the same foods. I'm doing the same workout. But the work, weight's not coming off. Mm -hmm. And I can't figure out what's going on. So then I had some blood work done to see what was going on. And that's when um, my doctor told me I was going in perimenopause. Mm. So my... What is what is that? I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so sorry. menopause, we have about four stages. Really four stages. So we got premenopause. That's when you um pretty much get your period. Okay. So um And then as you get to perimenopause, that's when... Your um, hormones start fluctuating, so your periods oh, become that's the irregular. Hot and everything. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you start getting all that. All then right. once you hit, once you go through twelve months of no period, that's the actual menopause. So uh, then that's when your um, our hormones, estrogen and stuff, are all coming down, and all of our hormones is kind of starting to decline. Yeah. So then you have your postmenopause, and that's after you've gone through the actual phase of menopause, and now you don't have no estrogen. You don't have. So now you're just trying to learn how to live life without these hormones. Let me ask you a question. So you saying that Heather's going to not have hormones in a minute? That means I ain't going to get fussed at as much. That, that does not mean that. That don't mean that? That does not mean that, and I don't want you to get that confused. Shucks. It is, that is very important that you do not feel that way because you are going to be sorely disappointed. <laughs> in my mind, I was just in, happy. In your mind, you was like, oh, wait a second. This about to be recess? No, sir. Algebra but that, 3. that doesn't have to later. <laughs> long, long time. Yeah. Shucks. <laughs> Yeah, you got me excited over here, Mike. So, oh, so the um, so because of that, um, they said my doctor told me I was in perimenopause. I don't know what that is. Got to look it up. Fine. Yeah. But my trainers are all pretty much young men, mm -hmm. um, because this is a young people sport. Yeah. So my trainers and stuff are young. They don't know nothing about menopause. <laughs> they don't know how to help women. And I was told one time I was told by one of my my trainers I don't know how to help help old women. First of all, I'm is that a was that a man? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know how to help older women. How to lose a client in 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, what? So I, I would go to the doctors and stuff, and no one could really help me. Um, there's just not a lot of people that's educated. Menopause has not been a very important subject, I guess, until recently. So yeah. now there's a lot of research, but or there's starting to be research, but there's not a lot of research. When you look at the research that's been done, pretty much they take um, women, they probably take like young, white, athletic women, mm -hmm. To do these studies or they'll take a man and then try to change the information to fit a woman yeah so actually menopausal women are not being really tested mm. for these tests so mm. i'm here to bridge the gap i dig that <laughs> there you go i see a need and provide the service it makes a purpose makes, makes perfect sense that's crazy and and 
like being older, you know, your, your boy almost fifty, man, and uh, I'm married to a lady around the same age as me without without me getting slapped yeah. in the face. You know what I'm saying? So that's it's big because we've actually been looking for a for a, a fitness home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, Heather more so than me because you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you just oh yeah, I'm just with it. Yeah. But Heather, she she loves that gym atmosphere. She loves yeah, and that's we big for about women. It. That's big for yeah. women is being in a place where the atmosphere is appropriate and they feel comfortable. Yeah. For a man, we can work out in the garage, give us some rusty dumbbells, and we'll make it happen, like Rocky in the barn. Yeah, yeah. But so, for a woman, that's important. So my studio is pretty much like the ideal place for a woman because it's just me in there. Yeah. So they can wear whatever they want. They're not yeah. going to be judged. No one's going to watch them or anything. So and a lot of women come in. And them and stuff like that. So that you have I'll have women gym. that come in. They want to work out like in their sports bra and stuff, but they won't do that at a regular gym because they're uncomfortable. But yeah. I'm like, get comfortable here, and then you can go do it there. Already, so, already. So... <clears throat> you retired out the service. You opened your gym. How has it been like owning your own spot, man? You know what I'm saying? Like you got the key to the joint. You know what I mean? How has that been? It's been great. So sometimes, you know, you pull up and you just see your name. So I have my Ooh. pictures on the um window too. So it's pictures of me and my son, our before and after pictures. Yeah. So to have us, you know, on all of my marketing stuff, mm-hmm. it's great to be like, that's, yeah. that's me. I did that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know what, man? Just seeing your name on there, seeing something that you created, you know what I mean? Like, that makes you smile, G. You know what I mean? Like that's, and it make you work ten times harder too, because you don't want to lose that feeling. You know what I mean? Like you pull up, you got the key in your hand, and you see your name on there, or it's people already in there. You walk in, and cats is working out, right? You just like, that a boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so let me ask. I got a quick question. Ahead, my bad. Don't want to jump in. But uh, you said you got your you and your sons before and after pictures. How old is your son, and is he on this fitness journey with you? Did you get him started in that? So my son, yeah, he is um twenty five. Okay. Um, but he. So what happened is he was overweight as a child, mm-hmm. and um he wanted to join the military. Okay. So I think the Air Force he had to lose maybe. 65 pounds. I think the army, he had to lose about 60 pounds. But they would even talk to him. Good. Oh, wow. <laughs> like the recruiters are telling him, like, you got to do this. So he asked me um, to help him. And at this time, he actually wasn't living with me. He was a um, senior in high school. He was living with his father. He wasn't living with me. But he asked me to help him. So I did everything online with him. I gave him his meal yeah. plans. I gave him his exercises. And, you know, of course, I seen him. So when I seen him, checked in with him, you know, I said, where are you? Let me see what you're doing. Stuff like that. Yeah. So, so are you, uh, tell the people if you do like online meal prep or online stuff, tell the people where they can reach out to you if other people are watching this and they want want to receive your help as so well. Yeah, so I do um online sessions through Zoom. Um I can do or we can just do I just do a plan for you and check in with you, be like an accountability partner. Mm-hmm. I can um create a meal plan for you. But so my handles on Facebook and Instagram are um Newsom Fitness and on LinkedIn I'm Letitia Newsom. Yeah, and don't and and don't worry about it. if y'all can't remember it's gonna be at the end of the yeah yeah we'll put it we'll put it all down in the works. bottom of the comments and all that good yeah, stuff so we'll make it super easy to super easy. to find her to link up man because yeah, I'm gonna tell sure. you what man and I think too a lot of times and I hate to say this but the older I get I want to be around people that's my age because a lot of times we think alike. Like, I can't yeah. do young people stuff. I'm not finna go out there and do... Trying to do CrossFit. I'm not finna do Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, and you know... You gotta find something that's and when compatible you, with what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. Right, and then when you and find... And what you're able to do. Yeah, first. First. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you find a safe place, you know what I'm yeah. saying, you, you're more willing to give those people your money because I'm comfortable. And the, the worst thing that you can do is make me comfortable because after that, I'm finna give you my money because I want to <laughs> be there. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're in the market for. But... With everything that you start, you don't always start at 100. You got to start from zero. What have been some of the challenges that you've faced since you've opened up? Well, one of the challenges, I guess, not as far as the actual gym, but just time management, trying Mm. to do everything, trying to balance everything, balance family, balance friends, balance schoolwork, balance, you know, my own personal life, just balance everything. Other things are... I think another thing is people, they want unrealistic, they have unrealistic goals. Mm-mm. Yeah, that, that was the part. I was going to save it for later, but that was going to be my, my question for you. How often do you get a person that want to turn into Beyonce? And it's just like, look at everybody in your family. That is not obtainable for you. 
And how do you approach that when telling a client, like, that ain't real? So, a funny story, I think one lady came in, she wanted to lose, like, 30 pounds in a month or something like that. And I'm trying to tell her. Oh, zip it. <laughs> and I'm trying to explain. They just glue tights and <laughs> I'm trying to explain we can't do that. And she's like, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? And I'm like, no. So, finally, I had to find, okay, let's go with your plan. How many pounds are you going to lose per week to meet this goal in a month? Month, so I got to break it down so they can see how unrealistic this is. Yeah. Mm. So then, once you break it down, what's that? Six pounds a week, okay? Because now the normal for women is one to two a week, but yeah. we don't triple that, okay? So <laughs> what are you going to eat so we can make sure we meet this goal? And once you know, we start breaking down. She's like, this, yeah. "This ain't gonna work." <laughs> Your math ain't math. <laughs> yeah, hey, I can't live off seven skittles and, <laughs> and two celery wraps a week. That ain't gonna work. Goodness Christ. That's crazy. So just that expectation management part was was, was kind of difficult to to as far as your goals and your, your journey. So with the um, time management and stuff like that, yep. yeah, it still gets pretty. Because my first client sometimes four a.m. My last client could be seven p.m. Goodness gracious! Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I got to figure out when to sleep. Yeah, that <laughs> also or, is yeah. Got a cot in the back. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but you still got to have. So many clients to pay your overhead, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to balance everything. Everything is a balance. You know how we do it. Let me ask you this: So I saw that you just got married recently. Did you start the gym with with your husband, or did you have that before? I had it before. I had so let me home. ask you this: How's your work life balance? Like bringing in a spouse into something that you passionate you're already about? Already doing? Does did you have to sell him in your sell him your dream, or he was in from the gate? Like how did that work out? So he actually, um, we met through Facebook on Facebook. So he had already did his research on me. So he, <laughs> already, <laughs> uh, he don't, he, he, he he don't, don't look Facebook you stalk you. He don't look you up. So he knew what you know what my passions and stuff were. Yeah. So um, we kind of met through that. So through fitness and stuff like that. So yeah. now I'm um, looking to relocate my gym. So he'll be helping me, you know, from start to finish. Now, so he'll mm. be part of that process. So what well, you looking but, at moving? Because we um. You know, we don't we don't stay in San Antonio. I say San Antonio, but eh, we on the yeah, outskirts. Yeah. By San Antonio. <laughs> so right now I'm looking at a place over in Alamo Heights. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what's up. That's close. Yeah, yeah, yeah closer. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to where we at. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so that that's really amazing because you you're talking to two entrepreneurs, you know what I mean? Like we we are firm believers in, in hustling for your passion and, and doing what we love. But you know, it's always like hard for hard for us when you don't have like a support. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I think that support or have like a mentorship, somebody that can say like I've done this and kind of lay the yeah, foundation yeah. for you to follow, like a like give you the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have somebody like that, or was it like trial by fire? Like no. So I do have a few friends that own gyms, but the thing is, there our gyms are so different. Yeah. So they have yeah. like the traditional box gym mine's is a personal training gym i have some friends that have franchises so they have to do what the franchise people say so like all of my um marketing research had to be done by me i had to you know research everything on my own but i had a um a business i do have a business advisor from utsa yeah. that helps me out a lot so that's what's up man congratulations really and do you say like you have to do the market research on your own, but just because of the menopause thing and the just because the specifics um, of the yeah, so people what, that you're working with? Trying to find where is my idea client at? Mm. So I don't want to put a gym where those people don't work out, you know, yeah, exactly. or gotcha, maybe gotcha. that's not my um, clientele. They don't, my gym maybe cost too much or something, you know, so I have to make sure I fit where I'm going to be is going to fit. Right. I so you have you. to research and re where is your idea client? Yeah. Where is that at located? So that's where I need to put my gym at. Gotcha. That makes so, sense. You might, depending on how, how we look over here, so we might have to come over there. I say we, Heather. <laughs> I'm going to put, put Heather on it. Cause I'm telling you, man, like, the older we get, I think, even if you're not in it to, to lose weight or, or, or you're in it to lose weight, but not to, like, be be all ready. But just be healthy. You ain't got to be healthy. beach ready, but just be to. healthy. Yeah, be healthy. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's super important the older you get, man. And I'm not saying that's going to help you live long. Shit, but yeah, I'm, it is. Health as well. Yeah, but at the same time, when it's your time, it's your time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if I'm here, at least I can I can have be, a better I'm quality a, of life. At the end of the day. There you go. Give so, yourself a fighting chance, man, at least. I do. And, and, and I'm, I'm 
a firm believer in that. So, man, congratulations again, man. Good luck, and we'll you. you'll be seeing more of us for sure. Or at least, at least one of them. At least Heather. We ain't gonna put too much on Pat, but Heather, Heather, you Heather know, get I that. Get, nah, yeah, I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when you when you did all of this stuff, right, man, and coming out the military, was it everything that you expected? Like, do you get that same feeling when you open the door today? Then that you did when you opened it that first day? Like, how's the feeling? <laughs> I mean, some days it's good, some days it's not. So what I have learned through this process, so like I said, I, I had trained for a bodybuilding competition. I had a coach. Um, they I told them this is what I want. They said this is what you have to do when I do it. And I thought everyone was like me. Mm -hmm. I'm learning I am the exception. <laughs> <laughs> People come in and they complain. I don't understand why you complain. This is what you want to do. Although it's still all in fun, but you know. Yeah. Just they have different, I guess we all have different motivations. So some yeah. days it can be, if I didn't get enough sleep, maybe a little tired and stuff. But I'm always love what I do. So, yeah. or, you know, I wouldn't do it. So, of course, of course. And then I think the most satisfaction is when people actually reach their goals. Mm. So, yes. that right yeah. there, I could take all bad days if I could have, you know, that one person that just reached their goal and happy. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. Changing lives. Mm -hmm. Changing lives. What's, your, what's the name of your gym again? Newsome Fitness. So, okay. Let me ask this. Uh, what does success look like to Newsome Fitness? If you had to you had to put it on pen and paper, what does success look like? Success would be um, pretty much if everyone reached their goal. Mm. So, whatever goal. Because everybody, honestly, some people, they come in and they, they have one goal. And um, they might reach it, but they'll stay with me just because of the relationship or just because mm -hmm. they like the workouts, just because they like the environment. Yeah. Um, a lot of women, some women come in and um, that's just, that's their me time. Mm. So sometimes they might even tell me, I don't want to do your workout. I want to do my own. I'll sit back and do homework and let you do whatever you got to do. I'll make sure you're safe. But yeah. <laughs> okay, you didn't pay me for this hour to sit down. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm going to sit Go and do my it. homework and let you have at it. Yeah, <laughs> dig that. Before we get into the more of the fun. How close to you finishing your PhD are you? How close are you? One year. I just started um, my dissertation last month. So I, that's a year process. I should be defending next April. What's up, man? We talked about school on the show. We talk about it because everyone that knows T-I-M-M knows that we're cousins. His mama is my mama's youngest sister. Mm. So we, we blood. And one thing that we always talk about is going to school and how important it is in, in different aspects. Right. And just for the sake that you're out there, man, and you're getting your PhD, man, that's on a whole different, yeah. that's a whole different level than an associate's and a bachelor's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what sure. I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> got to put that doctor on there. <laughs> so, just just for that, man, congratulations. Thank again. you. We're going to get into the end of the show, but guys, this young lady, I'm sitting here and I, I can't stop smiling because when we were talking off camera, it's 27 years that we may not necessarily have been like aces, but we were in the same circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to see people and to understand where you were. We were in Grand Forks, North Dakota. So anybody know where that's at on the map? <laughs> and nobody does. <laughs> and we know. <laughs> it's literally a straight shot. Straight shot up. Yeah. And uh, coming from that and understanding how we started, it makes me smile. You know what I mean? And I done heard some stories. So, well, it's been a bumpy road, T-I-M-M fam. It's been a bumpy road for this young lady. We ain't going to get into none of the criminal activity because we ain't going to self-incriminate. But, boy, I'm talking back. <laughs> She's but, had a time. But that makes the story even more better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that shows your resiliency inside of all your stuff, man. And, and, and I'm super glad that you decided to come to the show, man. I'm excited and I can't stop smiling. It's probably one of my favorite shows just because of the history of <laughs> yeah. like, what we are. But it's time. It's go time. <laughs> so at the end of every show, we play this game called Pick One. Okay. Right? I'll give you two choices. I'll give you a phrase. First thing comes to your mind. No bailing yourself out. You just got to choose. You ready? Okay. Let's get it. Air Force or bodybuilding? <laughs> Air Force. I thought you said you like bodybuilding. I do. Why oh, you say Air Force over bodybuilding? I think it would be easier to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. You only have one machine out of everything that's in your office, in your workout room. You got one machine to keep. What machine you keeping? My leg press. How did I know you was going to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, too I easy. I could have guessed that. Too easy. Last one. I give you the phrase, 
this is my moment? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Like a a movie? Yeah. Yeah, so like this is my, a movie in my life, I guess. That's what, <laughs> hey, that works for me. That works for me. Well, we do appreciate you coming by. The stories have been, the off-camera stories have been <laughs> 10 times better than the on-camera stories for sure. But this has been a crazy coincidence for me. Because I had no clue. I, I guess nobody had no uh -huh. clue that y'all knew each other from back day. So this has been yeah. awesome. Awesome. Leticia, thank you so much for swinging by, man. I hope this is not going to be the last time that I see you. And uh, hang on, I'm going to close the show out. And, and, and I, hopefully I can stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, you're so I welcome. You're extremely welcome. Hey, guys, here's the, here's the deal. Expectation management. Set realistic goals, achievable goals. That way, you have a marker that you can reach. And don't forget, it's only one Beyonce. <laughs> you ain't. Be you. Yeah. There you go. Then at the end of the K, uh, day, KT, what we gonna do? Go get it! Join the movement. We bringing people together. Bringing positivity. Making changes for the better. Because it's all about growth. All about success. We want to see you rise. Want to see you.